1159 at Radio Free America. And this is Uncle Sam with Music and the Truth Until Dawn. Right now, I've got a few words for some of our brothers and sisters in the occupied zone. The chair is against the wall. The chair is against the wall. John has a long mustache. John has a long mustache. It's 12 o'clock, Americans, another day closer to victory. And for all of you out there on or behind the lines, this is your song. Hey, welcome everybody to our Daily Gun Show. We come to you live every day at noon Eastern. That's 9 a.m. Pacific for about an hour each day. We do three gun-related topics, different topics throughout the week. Uh, we run it live on YouTube. Uh, we simulcast it over at gunchannels.com, where we're watching the comments from the people that are um, following the show live. And um, got distracted there. Um, I guess we're still posting everything. So the um, show has hosts. Three of us are here today. we got Bob jumping in from Canada. Thanks for joining. Yeah, hey, glad to be here. And then Jimmy run the show up in Phoenix. Hey there, good to be here. And I'm down here in Tucson. And let's see, we're on episode number. Uh -oh. I do. 451. I'm on the wrong spreadsheet. That's why it looks weird. 451. So it's Monday, it means we'll be doing some scheduling and we'll talk about using social media. And then we talk about the events that are coming up every day. We talk about a gun shop of the day, a gun movie, and the other things. Um, it's the weekend, so anything worth talking about that happened over the weekend? I wasn't paying attention to anything. Yeah, I got nothing. All right, so we'll dig into the week. We've got uh, pretty much most of the show scheduled out for the week. Uh, but if people want to throw suggestions out there for the different segments of the show, uh, feel free to do so. Um, we've got segments throughout the week. Um, we kind of have themes to the days. So Tuesday, we'll talk about Second Amendment issues and the state of the state. We usually go through and talk about the uh, situation in each state. Uh, then we go to Wednesday, where we talk about entertainment and have a more of an uh, entertaining show where we talk about entertainment. We have a good idea, a bad idea, where we debate some gun-related issue, and then we do the hashtag Daily Gun Show Showdown, where we take a look at all the photos from Instagram that have used the hashtag Daily Gun Show, and we judge them and come up with the best picture on Instagram. Thursdays, we talk about training and CCW. We also talk about gun stuff. Then on Fridays, we do gun tech, the gun business, and alternative gun topics. So like I said, this week we do happen to be scheduled out, but if you have any suggestions for shows uh, or for those themes on upcoming shows, feel free to let us know in the comments as we're watching the show live now uh, over on the Gun Channel side or over on the YouTube side. And if you're listening to the show in the future or you come up with something, you know, you hear a conversation somewhere and you think it'd be interesting for us to cover it, then uh, you can always email us at dailygunshow at gmail.com. All right, well, so that was this uh, beginning of the show where we dig into what's coming up, and I imagine, well, imagine we can just go right into using social media. Um, unless anybody else wants to add anything to what's coming up this week. Uh, I got nothing. Oh, uh, yeah, no. All right, well, so we'll move into how to use social media. We're going to be talking about getting media passes. A lot of people got media passes for SHOT Show this year. Clover and Ghost have got media passes recently for the Tulsa show, and that was inspiring. Hopefully a lot of people will take that lead and dig into uh, exploring media passes at, for events in their areas. We'll be talking about events later today, so maybe this ties in with that. For sure. Uh, so let's uh, talk about this. Get media, all right? So what's the, basically, how do you go about it? 
you to apply or you well, yeah, you got okay you, well you yeah. got to go uh, oh okay no i was just saying pretty much uh the stuff that i went through for the shot show thing was fairly easy but i don't know if if that's the same thing to get media passes i mean i don't know there's different a multitude of different passes that you can get you can go to what what was it the nssf or something like that so i don't know if it's the same routine necessarily but if it is it seems fairly easy yeah so if you're creating content then whatever that might be with a camera with a microphone with a pen right uh, however it is that you're creating content and just I had to double check. I thought that was me for a second there. <laughs> All right. Is that any better? Yeah, you're better. So however it is you're distributing content uh, and have any kind of audience, the, the what press is, is disseminating information, right? So you're participating in what they have, uh, like, on the, it, depending on the event, right? We're talking... SHOT Show right now, we're talking NRA show perhaps, we, when I'm talking about Ghost and Clover, that was um, the large gun show, so just something as informal, or I guess you could say as formalized as a gun show, the promoter of a gun show, uh, they're going to have, you know, uh, have made arrangements for that, they're going to have experienced that before, they know that marketing and um, news coverage is an aspect of any large event really, right? So a lot of times these buildings have press rooms in them, rooms that are devoted to being able to put people in with phone lines or chairs, you know, just a place where you can uh, get away from a loud noise or crowd or whatever and, and get information out uh, or coordinate with the person and have runners that take uh, photos to a place where you can edit them and get them out there uh, to facilitate your projects or whatever content you're creating. So um, like I say, any of these large gatherings are going to have some kind of accommodation for a, a press. So those the reason none of the gun ones are the same way. And uh, basically, yeah, I want to encourage everybody to, to seek them out. I mean, they're, they're, again, if you've got a camera or a microphone or a pen, then you're helping them to get the word out. And you're an ally. You're on their side. You're a Second Amendment advocate. So, um, I mean, it's very rare that you're going to find one that uh, has any problem with someone especially in this day and age with the way the internet works um, they're pretty comfortable with uh, cameras and microphones uh, documenting the events and promoting them so the process is almost always the same just go find whatever their registration is and look for a media portion of it like I say the most of them already have something some process for that Now, with the media pass, that's going to give you a lot better access in order to to make content, right? Well, yeah, like a lot of gun shows, like you're not able to take pictures and stuff like that. So if you have that media pass, that would give you that luxury, right? Or not not all the media pass. I don't know how that works. I mean, that's probably up to the entity or the organization, right? The function. Yeah. But in general, it definitely sounds like the way to go. So you can go to like uh, like these guys went to the show promoter and got a media pass. So again, they are la the largest gun show in the world. So they might be a little unique, but uh, again, you can go to different venues and uh, seek out their media credentials. And then once you've got any established media credentials, you can move on to the next event or the next um, association and get their credentials. So for SHOT Show, you get uh, credentials for the show itself, but you can also get credentials from the NSSF, the organizing, I guess, organization or the organizing group that, you know, the nonprofit that uh, runs it. Uh, so there's two different levels there. At the NRA, you can get press credentials and um, you can even seek them out in your local area. I remember back in the day um, before internet and everything uh, when we still had just pagers, remember pagers? You used to be able to, if you had a scanner and a pager and you went through the process of applying for it, you could get a press pass 
and then that would allow you into access to this group of people who uh, basically scan the radio, the police and uh, emergency frequencies, and would help and sort of uh, I don't know how to describe it, sort of an emergency services role, kind of like the ham radio operators do. You know, they provide a service when needed, and uh, part of it was getting photographers and people out to document crime scenes and stuff. This was again before cell phones and things were a thing. So if you had a camera and the inclination, you could have a scanner or even a pager that would alert you when something was going on. And then since you were in that group, you had a press badge, and that would let you pass the police tape and, you know, First Amendment and all that, and go up and take photographs of crime scenes and, and uh, emergencies and national disasters and that kind of thing, and document them and uh, help dis distribute information about it. So I imagine you can still get those press passes. Now that there's the internet, there's probably still press. And having official press passes from a, a municipality, I guess it would be, is probably got to have more weight than any of the organ, you know, the organizations passes. Oh yeah. Yeah, interesting thought. So I'm no expert on them. I just know that I've had them for a while from, like I say, these organizing bodies. But uh, I'd say it's worth seeking out. We're not here to give you everything. You know, we're just here to um, get a conversation started. Doesn't seem like we're getting much uh, on the YouTube side and zero on the gun channel side. So I guess we can move on. Yep. What do we want to hit next? I'm hitting um, the like off. I don't know. You want to go on one of the uh, the daily things? Sure. Let's do gun of the day. <laughs> All right. Let me pull this guy up here. What do we got, Bob? We got the fourth one. Before we do, we usually take a break between the first and second segment. I don't think we did this time to feature one of the members over at Gun Channels. So uh, each day we feature a member over at Gun Channels, a place we built a while back. It's a community focused on firearms, and uh, it's completely run by its members. So uh, today we're featuring Tech Daddy, who was on uh, Clover's show. Or was it? You know, it was Clover's show the other day. Or was it Ghost Show? It was Ghost Show, who had hosted a bunch of people who had been to SHOT and yep. talking about uh, media passes that kind of ties in. Um, also, he just made an announcement on the front page of Gun Channels. Looks like he'll be working with um, Bunker Tactical. So it looks like he's continuing to hustle. Oh, right on. Oh, that's very cool. All right, so now go ahead with your... Another day, what do? Well, it's uh, show 451, so I thought 451 Whitworth uh, sniper rifle, Civil War sniper rifle. Uh, these are really unique. They had a very strange hexagonal bullet. So you think about, like, how could that be accurate? But they are um, out to, actually, I've seen people shoot these things out to 1,000 yards. So think about that. That's a Civil War muzzle-loading rifle that can hit at a thousand yards. So very unique and 451 caliber. But yeah, yeah I've, I've seen Civil War snipe rifles. I guess you'd call them like long-range rifles, and they were like massive bars of steel with this little hole drilled through the middle of them to give them the accuracy. So that bullet must be pretty darn accurate to be able to use such a standard-looking rifle, a standard-looking barrel. It, yeah, it is. It's it's a hexagonal uh, bullet, right? Uh, as is the barrel. So you can't just shoot regular ball in it. The, With a twist, then? Is it which? What? Yeah, oh, yeah. It's, it's got a twist in it. Yeah. It uh, the, the hexagonal rifling actually twists. So... Uh, gets a real spin going to it. But yeah, it's just incredibly accurate. And, and I mean, it's just such a kind of a unique design. Downside, of course, is you can't shoot regular ammo in it. 
Although I have heard that you could patch just square stock into it. But as you can see by these bullets, they're actually hexagonal. Yeah, they like got edges, yeah. I like yeah. that graph paper. That works pretty good as a keep them all in size comparison. Yeah. It does. So the people that don't know, maybe people are listening on the internet or something and don't know that we do these uh, on YouTube, so they're live video, and we're showing the guns or whatever, and we're doing gun of the day, for example. So Jimmy's scrolling through a bunch of pictures of this gun or whatever, and I've seen a bunch of Nazi stuff. So why is there a bunch of Nazi stuff? Yeah, what's Nazi, up with that, Bob? Nazi gun, Bob. I don't know. I don't know. All right. I mean, sometimes that crap will show up, but I'm just making sure. Yeah, yeah, but we've had quite a few guns of the days, and it has even when we had the Nazi night guard, <laughs> we didn't have this many Nazi signs popping up. So I don't know. I don't know because it's a it's a British design. Did it kill not? Maybe because it killed Nazis. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, no, it killed killed the Yankees. Oh, yeah, it was used Great. by the used by the uh, rebels. I wonder if it's shitty then. <laughs> shitty, more yeah. accurate than anything else. Whatever, must not have hurt because we won. Better than the sharps. Okay. Well, now it's gonna days over. Let's move on. <laughs> we're done with this now. So we're gonna have a commercial. It's uh, Cyber Monday or whatever. So we're a small business. Oh, here we go. Means that Patreon will be locked. Oops. We're getting close to the end of the month, so that means that Patreon will be locking down the December uh, perks. So if you'd like to get in on one of these perks, you've got just a few days left. Uh, to do so. So we want to take a look at this video at the gun show and gun shop stuff. This month in December, we're going to be heading to the Small Arms Review Show up in Phoenix. It's the um, large crossroads gun show uh, with the building devoted to the belt fed, full auto, and well, just the coolest guns. So that's uh, going to be a really good gun show to browse around. And if you'd like to help spread some money to the vendors there, as well as some gun shops, and check out the gun show and gun shop stuff. Uh, for $50, we take 25 of that, and we spend it at the gun show or at gun shops. Then we take $7, put it in a box or a bag, and ship it to you. Uh, we take the rest for the fees and to put gas in the van. Uh, last month, we headed to Tulsa for the big Wanamaker gun show, the biggest gun show in the world. We found uh, about $30 worth of stuff for everybody. We spend about $400 at local gun shops and at the gun show. Uh, and the Patreon uh, supporters paid for almost all the gas. Uh, it was $400 in gas. So uh, very cool. It's uh, been successful so far. Our goal is to have 100 people at this level so we can go to gun shows and museums and gun shops and spend $4,000 a month. That will keep us on the road full time, uh, gas in the van and bills paid and servers running and everything. Uh, so that's our goal. If you think it's interesting, uh, share it. If you'd like to participate, please do. Like I say, I've got a few more days before the end of the month where the December one will lock in. Uh, then next month in January, we're heading to SHOT Show, and there's a real big gun show in Las Vegas the weekend after SHOT Show, and that's where we'll be heading uh, for the gun show and gun shop stuff next month. Thanks for watching. Thanks for everybody who keeps projects online. All right. So now we can dig into the events. I guess I should have just stayed your screen sharing there. Yeah, you could have. So you guys were talking about that uh, post that Dead Horse posted uh, this morning from, I don't know what her name was, but the one about. Oh, uh, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The background checks. Yeah, I made a video about that fake news, and we'll talk about that in our wild card thing tomorrow. All right, and there's Tech Daddy's update. Like he says, got his Funker Tactical thing there, so maybe he's working with them now. All right, so on, we look at upcoming events. We look at what's happening in the shooting industry slash community, and uh, I went through and updated everything over the last week from 2017, uh, figured out when the 2018 version of it would be, and then updated the site. So we've got quite a few things in here, uh, but we don't have everything. So one of the uh, reasons we feature this every Monday is to remind people that you can just go up to the top of any page on gun channels, on resources there, you can go to calendar, 
and there's going to be a link over here where you can uh, add an event to the calendar. We encourage you to do so. An event you might attend or that you would just like to attend, if it's not already in the calendar, post it. Uh, it'll let other human beings out there know about that event. You never know who lives near uh, or who knows somebody who lives near there or somebody might be traveling or for work or for pleasure and could add that to their um, you know, list of things to do. So uh, it always works for the human beings that are checking out gun channels. We got a lot of people that uh, are active and then a lot more people that just browse the site as a news source. Uh, so you're doing those um, events a real uh, favor by posting them over here. But then on the other side, since on Mondays we talk about how the internet works, I always like to mention that on the other side of it, the way the internet works is the spiders, the robots, the brains that try to figure out what the best thing to show you on a search engine uh, they go out and check things like backlink and who's linking to who. And we have a pretty big site here. So by linking to some of these events, like Michael Camp does, he links to the Connecticut uh, Citizens Defense League. Uh, that's uh, probably a little smaller website that we've got here. So we're hopefully doing them a favor by having that cross link. So uh, again, think about um, using the, social, the internet uh, as a tool. And that's one way that you can hone your skills by intentionally putting links out there that do favors or that help out these organizations and these events. All right, with all that said, let's dig in. So we've got the SAR show coming up. We mentioned that in the video. That's coming up here next weekend. So we'll be going to the big small arms review show. That'll be pretty fun. Next thing we've got in the calendar, SHOT Show. Down in Vegas, we need to put the uh, gun show that I was talking about the weekend after. Outdoor retailer up in Salt Lake City is uh, the same weekend after the, that gun show I'm talking about. Uh, that's basically SHOT Show without the uh, guns. It's probably a little different when SHOT Show happens the same week, but usually like the knife uh, people that are there and uh, anything with backpacks and camping will be there as well. Then you got the Great American Outdoor Show. That's like a week long event, I think, up in Pennsylvania. We've got a couple of people from gun channels that'll be going to that. We mentioned uh, Cycle Camp posts the uh, Connecticut Citizens Defense League uh, events. So they got their annual dinner in here as well as uh, a couple other events that now have been pushed down off of the main page here. Uh, so you can check those out. we got the Big Sandy shoot coming up. That's an outdoor um, machine gun shoot. Uh, there's also the uh, Knob Creek. I don't know why that one's not showing up in here. Maybe I missed that one. Uh, but Knob Creek usually happens right around the same time. I added the uh, cartridge shows, uh, a couple of the big ones. Uh, these are basically gun shows just for people to collect ammo and own ordnance and stuff like that. Then we got the Wanamaker show coming up in April. That should be a fun one. A lot of people from Gun Channels are planning on attending that one, so that should be a pretty neat event. Uh, then we've got that USCCA uh, Expo, which is sort of like a mini NRA show uh, that the USCCA uh, hosts. I think that's up in Minnesota or Wisconsin. And then we have the NRA meeting coming up in Dallas in May. So that's some of the events coming up, but there's lots more in there. Uh, we pretty much have them all through the end of the year. If you go to the firearms calendar, it'll let you dig into all of them. This is just a little preview on the main page here. Very cool. Well, we're ripping through the show today. So, uh, go to the gun movie. I yeah. So, what's this gun movie? It's uh, Taps. Yeah. You never seen Taps? Is that with those kids in yeah. a. Yeah, like at military school. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna shut it down. A bunch of hippies or, well, uh, I don't know what they are. Like the neighborhood kids start throwing bottles or something, and then I don't know. Somehow it turns into where they have to defend themselves. I think with the state national guard is gonna come tear it down or do something. Anyway, it turns out that the kids end up taking over the place and defending it. All right. So lots of guns in this. Oh, definitely. Have you seen this movie, Jimmy? Oh, yeah, this was the uh, Tom Cruise one, right, when he was a kid or whatever? Dude, like, everybody when they were still young, it's like, this might yeah. have been movies and stuff. It was a whole bunch of people's either first movie or real close to their first movie, so they all look like little kids. Yeah, I remember, I think it was uh, Sean, Sean Penn or one of the Penn brothers, and then, yeah, I remember it, but I don't really, I remember seeing it, but I don't really remember it that good. I was probably younger, but, yeah. I think it'd be worth seeing just for the nostalgia factor yeah and i think it was like they the guns were mostly like vietnam era 
uh, M16s and M60s and stuff. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I'll give it a thumb. I don't remember it that well, but I'll give it a thumbs up. Just something to check out. Yeah, it was good, but kind of weird too. Um, yeah. I'll give it two thumbs up though. Just for nothing else to see all these actors who are now names or more names or are dead, <laughs> not dead. Um, to see all them, plus you know, I see little kids carrying around a, a you know, a, a M60. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Try something new here. Hold on. Okay. I think this is a commercial from when the movie came out. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been informed that Bunker Hill Academy is to be closed. We have a home here, something we think is worth defending. You tell us where you put those weapons. All right, we have three demands. They're very reasonable. But oh, they're behind no, you stay with us, sir. Rated PG. Starts Friday, December 18th at a theater near you. PG. 1981. So there was a, a theater near you. Huh? I said at a theater near you. So 1981. That's an old one. I'm giving it one because it probably doesn't hold up. I think I watched it a couple years ago and it wasn't that great. But I certainly liked it when I was a little kid. Um, I would have been the same age as all of them probably. Or right around there. I was probably like a little older watching it. Yeah. yeah. I was growing up already, but it was interesting. I liked it. I was out cane shopping when that movie first came out. He's already on the rocker. <laughs> All right, well, we missed um, a couple of things in gun history last week. I guess we weren't uh, paying that much attention. So uh, we missed um, a good one, an important one. It was John Moses, John Moses Browning's uh, day that he died, November 26th. That was yesterday. Should have talked about that on Friday. Sad day for the world. Uh, looking at the thing about today. Looks like Marshall Dalton, brother of the three famous outlaws, is killed in Fort Sumner, Arkansas in 1887. And doesn't look like too much else is gun stuff. I guess in 2001, the Hubble telescope discovered a hydrogen atmosphere on some planet, the first atmosphere detected on an extrasolar planet. These they found hundreds since then, eh? I don't know, but that was the first one, not that long ago, 2001. All right, yeah. well, not much history, so I guess almost an abbreviated show, only half an hour long. We covered everything, I think. You know, I want to talk about uh, Browning. I wonder what he would think about bump fire stocks. Um, I'm pretty sure he would think it's dumb. Dude. Yeah, it's so slow. But uh, you guys know what that sounds mean. Time to uh, crack the knuckles, flip out them keyboards, and get ready for the daily tactical pop quiz. Uh, today will be a visual one, so we'll need we'll need some attention. Focus to your screen here. Uh, let's see. Screen share. All right. One of these days, the answer is going to be forty-two, and there's going to be a real rush to see who got got it first. <laughs> there it is. Lock on my screen here. There we go. Okay, not hearing nothing. Isn't that a 42? 
<laughs> One of the original 42s. Whoa, yeah. angry right now on gun channels. No Duck. way. Fake. This is fake. This is completely fake. They know each other. They live in the same town, basically. Who knows Duck what happens? Pistol. Fake. Don't even try. They're just doing it just right in front of everybody. <laughs> fake. <laughs> Well, I guess he was right. If he, did he say the right answer? Well, he said duck pistol, and I'm going to call that as good. Oh, that's cheap. Yeah, duck, <laughs> duck foot pistol, but I mean duck pistol. That's, I'll take that. I'll take it. Uh, At least it pays us a lot on shipping. Now, I will have to get a U-Haul to drag all the shit up to heavy. I mean, <laughs> but uh, at least it saves us a little bit on shipping. <laughs> And there's a few rigged comments out there in the chat. <laughs> oh, Angry even gives you your 1780 duck foot pistol, to be more exact. He knows because he passed the picture out to him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, don't tell anyone, but it's this one. It's this or one. Wait. Or does it say in the upper like left is the name of the file, like 1870 duck foot? No, not even. I make I make double check to make sure that that, that, Done that a few times. That, it's like well, you got it really fast. Oh, the name of the file is like, Uzi. <laughs> because remember, if you got any uh, what you might think are good questions or or good uh, um, questions for the quiz or anything, you can uh, mail it to us at uh, dailygunshow.com tactical quiz. Yeah, that's actually the only time that you know, Angry doesn't win. <laughs> when <he's laughs> the no, I'm just joking. When we use his questions, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> when he's ineligible. Yeah. All right. Well, we do also, uh, along with the quiz and the other things, we try to meet, feature a gun shop every day, and today it is this one. Up. Uh, the children pulled tour. We're going to take a look at the military museum at Dragonland. So you might be familiar with Dragon Man from his very large collection of full auto guns, or his gun shop, uh, or the shooting range at Dragonland outside of Colorado Springs. But uh, we had a chance to visit with him while he was doing an interview with the Brazilian television, and he took him back into the museum and let us tag along. Uh, his museum is very impressive, so it, uh, we haven't seen the whole thing, but we did get a chance to go in and see some of the World War II stuff. So as you come in past a very extensive, complete collection of World War II uniforms, you get to this large display of World War II uh, equipment and items, and it's impressive to say the least. Uh, you're there immersed in his collection, uh, which is, again, very complete, and Dragon Man knows all about it. He's the real deal. And he takes you through uh, and shows you the various uh, elements of the collection. So um, it's something, it's unlike anything else I've experienced. Uh, instead of being removed from all the items, uh, you're right there in the collection. So it's something that if you haven't a chance to experience, I highly recommend it. Uh, it's open uh, again in April. It's closed for the winter. And uh, then it'll be open on Sundays. Uh, with guided tours by Dragon Man himself. So if you've had experience uh, checking out the museum, please let us know in the comments, share it with others. And again, check out some of the other videos that are out there. They'll go into more depth of the collection and the museum as a whole. Stay tuned for more on the Gun Show Loophole Tour. And as always, thanks for watching. Does he have, like, he has vehicles as well, eh? Like 60 something. Oh. They're all fully like restored and have working machine guns on them. Oh man, <laughs> that was, that's the cool part of his stuff, man. They're all functioning. Yeah, everything's live and real. Wow. And in this giant display, he can go in there and he'll like pick up a belt and be like, "See, everything's dated '43 or whatever." Like everything's got the correct dates on it. Man, I gotta check that place out. He closes yeah, down for yeah, Christmas. Yeah. He's not open again until like April or May, and it sounds like he's expanding. So it'll be bigger the next time he opens up. That's cool. 
you know, I did I did kind of forget something. I don't want to don't want to leave angry hanging there. So uh, angry seeing you uh, miraculously got that gun before anyone else. Strangely enough, I think that makes you the tactical hot shot of the day. So that's all I had to say. All right. Well, I think that's the show. So, do we want to fill time or just have half an hour? I don't know. I thought we had something left. Do we? Uh, we talked about TAC. Talked about getting the media passes. We talked about the events. Talked about the shop. Talked about the gun. Talked about the movie. Did a quiz. Not that part. We talked about history. Yeah. Talked about events. What about what's going on tonight? point so it's monday so i guess uh hbs will be the well the first thing up will be the lobby they're just mentioning that over on the gun channel side that the uh but he said on the gun channel side where do you put that on the lobby oh in the lobby they're saying the lobby will go live after uh where show's over so pants already has a lobby set up then it'll be hawaii volcano squad i think will be the first one up evening the primetime shows that Matt does his nerd show where he'll talk about nerd and geek things and then uh, I think that's it on Mondays anybody else do a Monday show uh, uh, we like shooting but I don't think I don't know if they post on gun channels anymore you know, they've been trying to do their chat on their own site now and then uh, Jimmy will be back tomorrow with early watch and then we come in at noon and all starts over with uh, another lobby and some uh, Primetime shows on Tuesday. So uh, thanks again to Pants and to Knives and to Pink and the others that host the nighttime lobby chats. Maggie's done that a few times too. Um, that's an effort in keeping gun channels the way it is. Uh, those lobby chats actually are gun channels, really, in a lot of ways. The uh, place, otherwise it would be just a message board, right? It would just be a place to uh, uh, like check messages and leave a message like you know there wouldn't be much there wouldn't be much uh, activity but those lobbies uh, having them hosted like that uh, for a long long time there's not anybody in there but then when everybody jumps in for spurts you know that's what gun channels all about those conversations that happen so there's no immediate reward at all there's no financial reward there's just the uh, satisfaction of knowing that you're providing a place a room so that literally a room where uh, when people have a minute or two they can uh, check out and see if anybody's around. And then those times when there's a bunch of people around, the conversations you know, can be awesome sometimes. So uh, thanks to those guys who take that effort to uh, to do the, the lobbies over there. Yeah, for sure. Without them, that that's that's a big chunk of what Gun Channels is about, is just to be able to have those impromptu conversations with people. So, do, do. Where are we at? Oh, I guess we're pretty much wrapped up. Hey, that's it. A little quick today. But, hey. So, we'll be we long Cyber Monday. Your website is our store. So, if you have some money sitting there, then uh, we can use it. Definitely. Oh, for sure. Yeah, why don't we talk about that? Is, is uh, you know, that part of keeping this whole channel going and everything is we got to pay the bills. So, spend some money at the at the store and uh, you're helping us out plus you're getting some cool shit what about the trading post i mean we want to kind of talk about that too that's a good point i need to start putting more stuff over there uh I'm kind of waiting to see what sells at the gun shows or not but yeah anybody can post anything who's a member of gun channels can post anything over there um buy sell or trade yeah there can be some good deals plus you know you, you know that you're dealing with the fellow gun channels member so you're not just helping yourself you're helping somebody else and uh yeah it keeps some traffic on there which we want keep that thing running i guess if we're pretty much done we can wrap it up well we're not too much early um i've got a quote by clint smith here today but before that, I just want to remind everybody, please like, share, subscribe, give us a thumbs up. Um, big thing is to share these things, you know, like uh, 
get the word out there. So there's people you probably know that maybe they might not necessarily be into the show, but maybe they know somebody who is. So by getting the links out there and shared around, you can help uh, grow the show a little faster. Uh, let's see, um, if you can, support us on Patreon. The link will be in the show description. And I guess we'll just wrap it up with our quote. So it's Clint Smith. You have the rest of your life to solve your problems. How long you live depends on how well you do it. So on those kind of wise words, I'd like to thank everybody for watching and listening. And uh, we'll see you all tomorrow. The guys and gals of GunWebsites.com encourage you to take a CCW class every year. Practice at least once a month and carry every day. Thanks for watching GunWebsites.com.